right? So anyway, I'm just happy to be here. We, we, we are embarking at the high school right now in uh, an ambitious program to align our curriculum. We get our curriculum mapping and uh, start reevaluating our uh, what we're doing in our classrooms. And so that all begins right now. We, we're settled in and kids are going to classes and now it's time to start to uh, start thinking about what we're going to do to make their uh, school going days better and all the better that their education is um, more effective in, in, our, in our instruction and what we're doing. So that's what we're doing right now at high school. And Tony, what, what I want to come and talk to you guys today is just funny about what I just said, is Mr. Uh, Bill, our superintendent, um, he came to us a few weeks ago and he said, you know, uh, I have a project for our kids, for us as a community and, and for you as administrators. And, and he said, I'd like to launch a million word campaign. And the goal of the million word campaign is to have our kids read million words. And I'm going to put my phone in while I talk. For a second, Michelle. You're cool. Uh, a million word campaign is to get our students to read. And as we know, literacy is a guide to preschool of education. You can't even go and work in a math class if you can't read the directions in your textbook or read the instructions on how to do a problem if you're at home. And literacy unlocks the doors to many areas of our lives. And without it, you're not doing anything. You can't go to college. You can't get well-paying jobs. And I mean, let's be honest, you can't even work at McDonald's. And the nation right now, as we continue to struggle to increase our literacy rates in our nation, it's disturbing because if you didn't know this, our literacy rate among all the industrialized nations is the lowest. I know that's incredible, right? We have free access to education. We have our kids, or we bring our kids to school. You know, when we were all children, you know, we started, we might start pre, you know, kindergarten or, or even, uh, what am I thinking of, uh, preschool. You might pre I went to preschool. But still, our kids struggle in their reading. And still our literacy rate as a nation continues to fall. I mean, we're slowly losing our standing as far as an educated people in the world. You know, and when you consider that, ambitious programs like the Lean Reader program that Mr. Noble and myself, Mr. Wine, and Ms. Fuhrer want to, want to lead to is, is, a, is a goal that I feel is noble. Because what we want to do is if you can get a kid to read a million words in one year, you're going to create readers for a lifetime. And how are we going to do that? Well, this year in high school, I announced to my staff that because of our shared space with middle school, we have one class every day that's longer than the rest. It's our third hour classes. I, it actually lasts 60 minutes. Well, the other classes last about 50 minutes. And I told them, said, we're going to use that 10 minutes, so we're going to do a year time. If you're not familiar with what year means, it means drop everything and read. And it doesn't have to be a book. It, you know, it can be... I tell the teachers, you can assign it as time to another textbook to read an assignment to flip the classroom, so to speak. You don't understand what I mean by flipping the classroom. Flipping the classroom is where a student, <clears throat> the day before or the end of the class, or the night of their homework is to read their textbook and do all the little things that we, they need to prepare for the next lesson the next day. So when they come in the next day for their classroom, the teacher flips them on. And it becomes more of a collaborative classroom than it is a sit and get, which we're all used to from our days in school and college. You know, if you understand what I mean by that, it's teacher talks, you listen, take notes. But it's an innovative way of getting kids to, to interact with the teacher. And it, it actually improves their learning because they're communicating. Part of literacy, of course, is the spoken word, literacy. And that's, that's an area that allows the teachers to do that. So we have, we have started to target some things to start doing that. So where do we come in as a community? That's the question. <clears throat> we have a program at the school, every school is taking place, and we've set some funds aside to reward our students to achieve that many word mark. And we even have programs in place to track how many words are reading. But we want to do a little bit more. We want to reward our kids. And that's where folks out in the community, folks here in this room, can help us. <clears throat> Today, I want to challenge you to make a community. The community, the city of Henrietta, uh, our city to march lockstep with our students to include ourselves in this reading drive. I told our teachers today, I put signs out over one of their doors. 
this is what Mr. Vine is reading, and then knock on another door and say, this is what Ms. Black is reading or Mr. Black is That's what we did. And we want the kids to know that as teachers, we're leaders in this. We're part of the process, that they don't walk alone in it. And that we're going to model to our students that we ourselves value literacy enough that we ourselves take time out in our day to read. And it was important to me that before we even began this process and even started announcing it to our schools and to our teachers, that I already put up on my office door, Mr. Vine is reading this today. And my office says, what are you doing that for, Mr. Vine? I said, it's important that you know that, I, that I'm a continual learner and my learning never stops because I don't think our learning ever stops. I think whatever business you're in, uh, I don't know if you guys experience this, but their CEE was continuing education in the right? that we have to achieve. To, for some of us to get raises, for some of us just to keep our jobs. My wife has to do that just to maintain her position as a speech pathologist at St. Francis. <clears throat> so we have to, our, our journey as learners never end. That million word program that Mr. Belville, myself, Mr. Wine, Mr. Ms. Fuhrer advocate is that launching pad. Because if, if we can get our students to learn the million words, we'll start having it. And we'll start having it in our students. We'll start having it in our community to grow as learners, not just our kids, but ourselves. And that's what it's about. Not that just at the football game, we're still announcing, we're going to announce the football game. And we're going to try to keep updates. And we'll let, the, we'll let the, the, the community know where we're at, where our schools are at. And we're going to celebrate with our students. We're going to track where our students are reading. Not the books, but to let the numbers of words they do. And we've, like I said, we've set some funds aside to help them celebrate. <clears throat> now, this is what I want to ask you. What can our community do to help our students achieve that goal? Not just model it for them, but help them celebrate. I have a few ideas of my own. I know that folks are active in the community. <clears throat> Maybe we can get accomplishment cards, you know, a million word reader award. And that million word reader award, maybe we can talk to our, our Subway, our Sonic, whatever, give them a dollar on the sandwich or something to reward them for their hard work. And we are going to faithfully try and faithfully monitor what our students do to achieve that goal. And the only time you're going to get one of those cards is if they've done that. And I'm here today just asking you guys, help support our school in this. Help support our children in this. And if you have an idea that can help us uh, reach our goal of getting our students actively engaged in their own literacy and to reward them for their hard work, Please feel free to call the school, email me, email Mr. Noble, and help us, help our kids. Let's give them some let's, let's, you know, I'm not ashamed to daily care. <laughs> I'm not. And if we can daily care, just to start that habit, I'm willing to do it. And I hope you guys are too. And that's why I'm here today. I'm, gonna, I'm begging the community, I'm begging you guys, I'm begging everybody. So let's make an investment in our kids that's tangible and it's rewardable they get to see it. And if we can do that, that would be extremely helpful to us all. So with that, I'm going to end my spiel on our million word uh, uh, program issue for the year. And turn it over to you. For, if you have any questions that I can add, ask for you, answer for you, or help you with anything, is there anything I can do for you guys? From a private standpoint, how many kids do you think will achieve that? Right. What, what's the Probable. What's our goal? Well, I mean, the goal is for everyone. Our goal is for everyone, but practicality kind of kicks in. And you're probably looking at about sixty percent return on So how many is that? At our schools? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a history guy. So you're getting from my poor math skills. So how many? So if you're looking at the high school, you're looking at about three hundred kids. Two hundred ninety-five kids. That. Two hundred ninety-five kids. Let's say sixty percent of those achieve. But at the, at the elementary, from K through, you know, actually, we, we go further than K now, from our three-year-old program, which you're not reading, which is honestly, our K, our first grade through fifth grade, we're looking at about 700 students. And you're still looking at about 300 in the middle school. So, if you're looking at totals in that area, you're probably looking at somewhere higher up in 60% is going to achieve that total. So, three or 400 is possible. Right. So, I'm just trying to think if we had some reward budget, if you will. Right. We don't have anything to give away, really. Of course. The hospital, but we, we give money 
Mm -hmm. uh, to so for someone, so they came up with a sort of a standardized reward, uh, which are those of us who don't have any gift, mm -hmm. or we can give cash for it, we want to do that. Well, maybe we take those, because I'm going to just take money, because I'm, I'm really scared about just taking money. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all I have to do. But this is what we want to do. And of course, you don't need money. We can go buy it. Yeah, we can go buy it. Right, right. 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 Man, but let me, let, me, uh, let me bring some of that, Mr. Mo. And uh, let's let him and I think about what things, that if, if, if you guys make donations, what could we get for the kids, like a grand prize? Uh, and and this, is, this is something I thought about. For the school celebration, this is in my mind in the high school. For the school celebration, your goal is a million words. But let's say if we as a community find something special, like you guys donate, and maybe we look at getting, you know, a, like a window surface or something like that. Let's just pretend. Let's just be crazy for a second. <clears throat> if you exceed that many words, then your name can go into that to a drawing to be qualified to start getting into that upper echelon tier. And, and, be, and get the extra reward. Because we're going to fund the celebration for our students. <clears throat> we are. Of some sort. Uh, my, uh, this year, this week, I formed a, a, a side council, which is a leadership council in my school, of select teachers. And we, we will meet every week, two weeks, to delve into our stat, our data, and what we're going to do to improve our school. Because they're my teacher leaders. So that's something we're doing. And one of the things I'm brainstorming right now is what to do with those funds that Mr. Noble made available to award our students. Um, in my mind's eye, I see those students who surpass that million word goal, we should do something special for them or give them something special or put them in a drawing to receive something special. And I think something that the community can probably help out with in that regard for organizations like yourself, maybe we can invest in like an iPad or for a student, or even a couple, or two, or, you know, one for each side. There's three sides, that's three iPads, and I don't know how much this costs, but I don't pay attention. Like iTunes gift cards. Like iTunes gift cards, yeah. I mean, we can just do little things like that. Doesn't mean we don't have to buy them the world, we don't have to buy them the world, we don't have to buy them the car. But we have, you know, but, but something that our kids can, you know, we ask kids to work hard in school, and, you know, I've been a high school teacher all my years, all my years of education, and every kid's like, what does this mean to me? What do I get out of this? Well, you know, the, the philosopher in me goes, well, there's intrinsic things you get from education. You know, you grow as a human being, you gain understanding, you, you, you start to garner reasoning skills, and so you're not led around with the bull with the nose in your hand, with the ring in your nose. So that, that's one of the first things you gain. But students today, they almost look at life like, we look at our jobs. I, I work this hard, so I should get this out of it. Well, school's not set up that. This is one of those things where we could probably say, here's your value. And it's not going to be a great, great value. Like I said, that would be a car. But it could be like iTunes cards and things like that. And we can put our kids' names in and allow them to enjoy the fruits of their, of their labor. How are you monitoring the total number of words? How are we monitoring? At the, high, at the middle school and elementary, we are putting in AR. They have to do the AR program. That we can put and say, what that basically means is like my little girl, she's a she's a fifth grader, she does AR at her school, so they read a book and they have to go on the computer to answer questions. Oh, and, then, and then of course we, that guarantees we know what they've read. And there's so many words in that book, you exactly. just get the cumulative total. Right, and we start adding it that way. And at the high school, we AR know, is advanced reading, is that exactly, it? sir. It's advanced reading. And so at the high school, we don't have that program because it kind of pops out in the middle school. Right. Uh, so what we're going to do is, by instituting our ear time, I'm going to have our teacher, third hour teachers, monitoring what's being read, and then we we can start understanding, you know, pages and Numbers. words and things like that. So we have some we have some mechanisms in place. Okay. The AR system has been in the middle school and elementary though for some time. Yes, sir. That was kind of interesting, and all on the girls. But if you read the book. If you see the movie, the AR test is designed for asking a number of questions that 
aren't in the movie. Right. So, but I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, you have to read so, it. Yeah, it's definitely a question. Unless it comes out on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> like I, like I told my, like my teacher today, they don't have to read classics, you know, they don't have to, they don't have to pick, you know, Dust and test because they don't want to, but they read magazine. This goal is for them to read. And as we get them to read, maybe we can, as instructors, I told them, as instructors, start introducing them to more complicated texts. You know, get them to read things that's going to stretch their minds and make them think and make them pick that little noggin up there work a little harder other than Sports Illustrated, even though we all know that Sports Illustrated is a wonderful publication. <clears throat> if your mail cannot be looked out. <clears throat> so, those are, they get their rotary magazine on a weekly basis. I don't have a word for that. That's another good one. A monthly basis. I'm sure they've all read those. We'll put a little back there. So, these are things that we're, we're doing after we're doing this whole well, This is, and, I, and I'm just appealing to you guys. I'm asking you uh, to partner with us because we don't have all the answers here as to how we want to do everything. But that's where our community comes in. You know, schools are part of the community. The community is part of our schools. And we don't operate in isolation away from each other. I mean, I know that some schools do that, but our school is not, and it will not. As long as I'm the principal of the high school, we will partner with our, with our community. We will work together to do what's best for our students. With the key words being what's best for the student. And that's where we're going to go. And that's why I'm here today, because my goal is to work with you guys to make sure that our kids our students had the very best that we could possibly do. And bless them. That's my goal. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Thank you all.